Rather than jumping straight into the rules of differential calculus though, I just want to build on our understanding of what we're actually doing when we differentiate a function. So remember our goal here is to find the derivative of this quadratic function at the point where x equals 6. And that is equivalent to the slope of the tangent line that touches the curve at that point. The problem with finding the slope of the tangent line though is that we only know the exact coordinates of the point where it touches the quadratic function. So what if instead of drawing a tangent line, I went and I chose another point along this function that's relatively close to the point where x equals 6, so maybe this point where x equals 4 here, and I drew something called a secant line that connects the two points. Now you can see here that this secant line has a similar slope to the green tangent line. It wouldn't be the exact same, but it would be a good approximation for the slope of the tangent line. Why the secant line is a lot handier though, is that we know the exact coordinates of two points on the secant line. And we can then connect the two points with a right angled triangle and determine the rise over the run to find the slope. I'll just write down the coordinates of these two points along the secant line. So the lower point here, that is the point 4 comma f of 4. By f of 4, I just mean the output of the function when x is 4. So I could just calculate that at the side here f of 4 will be 4 squared plus 3 by 4 minus 5, which would be equal to 23. The higher up point here is going to be 6 comma f of 6. And f of 6 will be 6 squared plus 3 by 6 minus 5, which is 49. So that means my slope of the secant line, which is rise over run, is going to be f of 6 minus f of 4 all over 6 minus 4, which is just 49 minus 23 over 2, which is equal to 26 over 2, or just 13. So the slope of our secant line is 13, and we would expect the tangent line to have a slope roughly similar to 13. I can tell you that the actual value for the slope of that tangent line is 15. So how could I get a better approximation than 13? Well, what if when I was drawing my secant line, instead of choosing the point where x equals 4, which I said was relatively close to 6, I went and chose a point a lot closer to 6. I could choose a point maybe as close as x equals 5.99. Now my diagram is getting quite cluttered and it's quite small, so I'm not going to draw this secant line, but if you could try and visualise what a secant line through those two points would look like, it would be very close to the green tangent line. And I'm just going to calculate quickly what the slope of that secant would be. So the slope would be equal to f of 6 minus f of 5.99 all over 6 minus 5.99. And if I was to put that into my calculator, I would get a value of 14.99. And as you can see, that is a lot better approximation of the real slope of the tangent line, which is 15. Of course, I could take values of x even closer to 6 again. I can maybe take x to be 5.9999, or just slightly bigger than 6, at 6 6.0001. And that would give me values for a slope of... 14.9999 or 15.0001 and as you can see I'm getting closer to the real value of 15 each time but maybe you've noticed 
that the closer the points are together that I take, the better the approximation is. Or another way of putting it is the smaller the value of the run, the better the approximation is. Because if you look at our first approximation here, our run was 6 minus 4, which was 2. Then when we took x to be 5.99, our run was only 0 0.01. And in the final example, the dif difference between our chosen x value and 6 is only 0 0.0001. And each time our approximation got better. So we say that we are taking a limit of the slope expression as the run approaches zero. But that's going to be the topic of the next video, which is differentiation by first principles.